Hello, good morning. Welcome to my channel. My name is Nomsa. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Um, it's really, really nice of you to subscribe. Yeah, let's talk about my first trip to the UK. Um, that was the year 2006, you know. I came in 2006 and that was my second flight, by the way. The first one, I think I went on a trip that was sponsored by the government to South Africa. So that was like, okay, this is our second one and we're going to a foreign land, a proper foreign land, because I don't, I don't regard South Africa as foreign because it's in Africa and it's close to, to home. I come from Botswana, by the way. So in 2006, I got a job here in the UK to come and work as a nurse. <laughs> yeah, to come and work here as a nurse. My God, I was so excited. Everyone in the hospital was so excited for me. So right, I got into a flight. I was on my own. My family, well, they uh, did their goodbyes at the airport and I flew over to South Africa. And I really, really um, felt so alone now at the airport. All I had to do was read signs on the walls. Yeah, I had to read signs. I had to follow. I had to ask directions. And the people there were really nice. And um, I got onto the flight to Europe. I think there was like three of us, two, two boys, two nurses, male and myself. Um, they were really good. They were like brothers. They took care of me on the flight. That was very good of them. And uh, we parted ways in London Heathrow. When we got to Heathrow Airport, um, I had to fly to the northwest of England because I was going to Morecambe. They uh, had to fly uh, to uh, the Midlands. So that's where we parted ways. By the way, I think I don't, I don't remember seeing them after that. If I have, I don't remember. Uh, maybe not very well. Um, anyway, that's not the point. So we got to, I got to Manchester Airport. And uh, you know, when you walk out from the airport and you walk out like after all the checks and stuff, and then there'll be these, um, there'll be these people outside with placards like with names on. That's when I remembered someone has, has got to come and get me. So I got out, right, and um, I looked around and I was like, how come there's no one to come and get me? So I started to panic. I started to panic thinking, oh my God, Namsa, what have you done? So anyway, I um, came back inside into the airport because it was now very cold. And guess what I was wearing? A leather jacket. <laughs> They did say it was cold. So when it's cold back home, I would wear a leather jacket on some days and maybe just a jumper. We call it a jersey or a cardigan. And that would be nice. That would be fine. We rarely wear a big coat. Maybe when it's raining. Yeah. So I didn't really bring a lot of things because I was told don't take too many things, you know. So I didn't take too many things. I had my leather jacket one. It was nice and new anyway. So who doesn't want to wear a nice and new leather jacket? <laughs> yeah, I wore that and it froze. It froze on me. I was freezing. It was like I was wearing steel. I was so cold and I thought, oh my God, what have I done to myself? So I came back inside and rummaged through my handbag and I found my employment letter. Jeez, I looked at the letter and I came back outside and I saw this taxi man and I approached him. I said my hellos and I handed him the letter. He looked at it and said, oh, OK, get in. So I got in and at the back of my mind, I thought I was going to work in Manchester Hospital because all the time the, 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 the correspondence was coming through while I was in Botswana. They had different uh, addresses. Sometimes it was Liverpool, Cheshire, sometimes it was Manchester, you know. So I assumed I was gonna work in a, in a, in a, in a hospital in Manchester because even the picture they sent me, 
It looked like a hospital. It was massive. It was beautiful. I never imagined a home to be as big and as beautiful as that. So when I got into the taxi, I thought, oh, okay, I'll get into this taxi and he'll take me to the hospital and uh, I'll look for this manager. So he drove, he drove and uh, I think I must have drifted off to sleep because it was like a mini taxi. I drifted off to sleep and after an hour I woke up, we're still in the car and driving and I'm thinking, should we not have been there? So I thought, I started to panic. I thought, oh my God, is he, is he to be trusted? What's going on? Why does he keep driving? And it looked like there were no buildings now. So I thought, oh. So I said to him, where are we going? He said, darling, we're following the address that you gave us. That's where we're driving to. She said, relax. He said, relax, my sister. I'm from Egypt, by the way. And he told me his name. I was like, so I started to feel like comfortable now. I said, oh, okay. So we drove and drove. And um, as we drove, I drifted off to sleep again. And the next minute I woke up, we were in Morecambe and we were in a car park. And there was this beautiful place in front of me. He dropped me off there. I paid him 250 pound. To me, it didn't sound like a lot of money because in Gabs, you could pay 250 pula. And I, I didn't think it was a lot of money then because now when you knew, you just don't understand the currency yet. So, um. I pulled my bags and got into the nursing home. When everybody was looking at me, they were like, oh, hello. They went, this one is very clever. How did you get to know where we ought to go? I was like, I got into a taxi. And that's when my manager was like, oh my God, Namsa, I'm really, really sorry. I forgot to come and pick you up. <laughs> He completely forgot to come and pick me up. <laughs> but anyway, the company paid me back my 250. And um, yeah, he, he had um, already uh, sorted out accommodation for me. So he immediately took me to this lady. She was a South African. Oh my God. She was a nice lady. Nice lady, almost like my near to my mother's age. So when I got there, she was like, as soon as she said to me, hello, what's your name? I said, Nomsai. She said, um, where do you come from? I said, Botswana. She was like, oh, okay. And then she started to call me Sasa. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's South Africans. As soon as I say Nomsa, they just know it's Sasa. And uh, she said, um, as soon as John left, she said, um, right, Nomsa, this is England, darling. There's nothing for free. I pay half, you pay half. Even the landline, you have to pay half. Darling, I paid half. The very first day I put my foot in that house, I paid half of everything. The rent, the food, even the landline. She was nice, she was a nice lady. I lived with her for two weeks and she even went and got me a bed seat. She got me accommodation, a very nice landlord, May his soul rest in peace. Yeah, so it was really nice coming here, but the cold was like terrible. And then there was this time when I had to um, bring my husband and, and, and my mom. I think that was like after a week because I needed to let them know that uh, I had safely arrived. So I'd been working a way out to make a phone call. Now you remember, I was asked to pay half of everything but then I couldn't make the phone call because it was in Botswana and I didn't have a calling card. So I've <laughs> plus the other thing, she didn't want to be woken up by the phone because she was doing night shift and the phone was not far from her bedroom. So <laughs> I had to find ways and means to go and find um, a place to call. So I went into, into the town center. It wasn't far by the way. And uh, when I got to the town center, I um, I think I've got some coins and I made the first phone call to my husband. Oh, bless. That was bliss. Yeah, I told him where I was, how safe I was and how very, 
very cold it was oh jesus <laughs> it was ever so glad to know that i'm safe and then i called my mom and i told her and all this time my god i felt ever so cold i still i, I had bought a, a myself a cardigan and some and a pair of boots but i, I still felt like I was, I, was, I was like walking into a fridge i felt like i was i was covered with ice oh my god it was ever so cold yeah, and uh, the food, ask me about the food, oh my God. It felt like I was eating sand. I just felt like every time I ate it, I felt like, oh my God, this feels like I'm eating sand. And the vegetables was ever so bitter. I think it took me about a month and a half to get used to the food. <laughs> it took me a month and a half to get used to the food. Yeah, that you will be seeing me cooking on this channel anyway. That was my first trip to the UK, my first experience. And boy, um, I can't believe I'm still here. Um, that's almost 15 years ago. I'm crazy. I'm really, really crazy. I didn't really think I'd be that long. <laughs> I just thought, right, okay, I'm going to the UK. I'm going to work for five years and I'm going home. I'll be going back home. Yeah, that's what I thought. But somehow I got used to living here and I got used to the cold and I've got my kids now and my husband. And um, yeah, hopefully one day I'll go back home. Right. I hope you enjoyed my little story. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. We've got more stories to, to come in. Thank you. Bye.